You want big results with yourself or your child's posture with little effort? It's Dr. Norris here and today is back to school day locally here in the Boulder County area and so traffic was crazy and on the way in after I got to the office Michelle was telling me about how Cyan's backpack was so freaking heavy she had to carry it for him so what we're doing is we're gonna be filming some segments today on back to school and bad posture exercises so whether you're a teenager with poor posture or even like in the case of Zion he's only nine years old right so he's already experiencing things like headaches locking his neck at certain points of the time getting into like spasms over uh, the weekend there that happened just a couple weeks ago so like he's already having spine problems at eight or nine years old I see that in teenagers all the time and then of course by people are in their 20s or 30s I mean lots of people are experiencing neck pain back pain headaches and a lot of it is just simply attributed to your posture and your alignment so of course getting a good upper cervical correction and full spine correction is gonna make better posture more possible but doing some corrective exercises really is what locks it in place, right? And so with my background as a strength and conditioning coach in my past life, I really encourage people to embrace the spinal hygiene exercises on a daily basis. And what I'm gonna show in this video is three exercises you can teach your son, daughter, or yourself to do and help them have better posture and better spinal health through their whole life. So real quick, I want to talk to you about forward head posture and loss of cervical lordosis or attaining a cervical kyphosis, which is the opposite type of curvature that you want in your neck and ultimately will affect your entire spine, including your lumbar spine, which is where most people get their disc herniations and disc bulges. So actually taking care of your neck is super important for your entire spine. Uh, and the problem is that when you lose the curve, when you have this straightening of the neck, it just puts an extra force and load into those discs on a daily basis. It causes them to wear out. The facet joints aren't doing their job in terms of holding the load and force of your, your head, right? You have a 10 to 12 pound bowling ball that's just constantly bouncing right here. And so when you have the proper curvature to your spine, it's like a spring. But when it's straight, it doesn't have that same uh, compressive force, we can call it, okay? Or tensile, like, you know, resistance to compress. And so uh, long term what that results in and typically, you know, we have some traumas and whiplash injuries and things throughout our life that we're exposed to or, you know, for myself, I haven't had any whiplashes, but I've had lots of sports injuries, which are just other types of whiplashes, right? And essentially, if you've ever had a uh, concussion or hit your head in a way that you thought you were, you, you might have a mild concussion, you damage your neck in some sort of way, whether it's the upper spine or the entire cervical spine okay and so what happens long term then is you start to get arthritis and degeneration of these discs but that's potentially preventable if we can get to it fast enough if we can restore the curve and get the head back over the shoulders and reduce that forward head posture you can potentially prevent this degeneration from happening and of course a lot of pain and misery and suffering along the way so the first exercise, I'm going to give you three today. The first exercise, an oldie but a goodie, is chin tucks. And I often am surprised, with, especially with children or adolescents or teenagers uh, who have really bad posture, they don't really have a lot of um, body awareness in the sense of like figuring out how to activate these muscles. So I'm going to give you some really important cues. What do you want to do for beginners is just get your back flat on the wall. My feet are kind of off the wall. I'm sort of leaning against it per se. And what I'm going to do here is just get the ridge on the back of my head. I'm gonna to try to press that up against the wall. And as you can see, it kind of gives me a double chin. And because I'm actually forcefully pushing back, it even contracts this muscle on the back of your throat here, which is on the front of your spine, which actually helps with the curve and helps with forward head posture. So uh, what you wanna do when you're first getting into this is like just finding that and pressing, even just for three, to five seconds to really feel that force, feel that contraction behind your vocal cords here. Uh, and it should be pressing into the head really hard. And you might even feel like your chest kind of lifting or your, your, you know, your shoulders lifting off the wall. And that's good because it means you're really getting the strength transferring down your spine, okay? So that's the kind of first part of this first exercise. The second part is if that's easy, then what you can do is the full chin tuck with a neck plank, okay? So you know how to do the activation, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, first I'm gonna squeeze my glutes, get your butt off the wall, okay? I'm in this straight planking posture, really squeezing my glutes hard. I'm pulling my belly button into my spine, and then I'm gonna press my chin back, and I'm really just putting all the force into the occipital ridge back of my skull. It's totally safe uh, to do this and a great support because now my entire spine is 
pushing into extension, okay? So I have a really flat back, I'm totally planked out here. And just like you would do like an abdominal plank on your forearms, essentially I'm just pushing on my back and my head for this extension. And that's great to do. You can do that for time, okay? So let's say at first it's tough, maybe you do 10 seconds and you just kind of start getting wobbly or you, your back hits the wall again, you're not really getting your shoulders off the wall. That's what I want you to then start adding time, maybe 10 by 10 by 10 to add up to 30 seconds, and then eventually get 30 seconds, and then maybe 60 seconds. And kind of like a plank, you could honestly go for two, three minutes. You want a, a neck strong as a bull, get strong on the wall and do several minutes at a time, all right? And next is face pulls. So I, I got these new bands, they're nice and thick and they're fun to play with. And I got a little uh, eyelet ring up here so they're easy to attach to in the office. But of course not everyone has an apparatus like this. Maybe you can take the bands to the gym, attach it to the squat rack, or even like loop it through the top door handle of your door. So it's just a little bit higher than your head or your face. And you can either use a thicker rubber band like this or those th like thicker uh, shoelace bands or TheraBands. And those are really easy to source online Walmart, whatever, you know, not hard to find, all right? Uh, so with this band, we're gonna do face pulls. So you can do this in two variations. You can either get staggered and kind of like a scissor stance, get your arms out nice and straight, slightly above the, the face and the head right here. And then I'm just gonna pull back, bring my hands almost like my thumbs back towards my ears. And I'm really trying to keep my neck relaxed, but back slightly. So I'm not necessarily like, forcing my head back, but I'm definitely not letting it like drop down or hang in any way. So I'm holding this contraction right here and really feeling a great squeeze between my shoulder blades and like lower under the shoulder blades back here, which is your lower trap. One of the toughest muscles to activate and usually the weakest in people with poor posture, okay? So getting even just that hold there and feeling that flex. And while you're doing your reps, let's say you do 10, maybe even up to 20, but holding it for two or three seconds is a lot better than just doing 20 reps as fast as you can, okay? So really focusing on strength when you're first getting into this and getting these isometric holds and feeling that contraction between the shoulder blades there without you know, necessarily arching the back too much is exactly what I want to do. And again, 10 to 20 reps, you could potentially be doing this. I tell people, tech workers, people work at desks all day, get one of these hanging on the door and just maybe every time you're in and out of the room or whatever, hit the elastic band once or twice and really activate those muscles, prime them so they can help your posture all day and make it easier and more efficient for you to be sitting. The variation of this is just simply doing it in a, like a kneeling uh, stance right here. And again, then you can maybe find a lower attachment point like a railing or a banister but still pulling that towards your face and a lot of times when i'm like at the gym I'll, on the cable stack i'll grab those tricep ropes set it up at the highest setting and then i do my face pulls that way okay so another variation of this, this is definitely much more advanced but it's like kind of a super shoulder extension and getting thoracic extension happening at the same time and so what you're going to do is just set that elastic band or the cable all the way down on the low setting I'm going to stand in that, you know, perfect posture position, my glutes slightly activated, my core is slightly tucked in, my chin slightly tucked, and then I'm just going to go from like a low hanging position all the way up. I got too much elastic band there, you know, this one's pretty strong, so I'm going to go from, almost from here. You can start lower if it's a weaker band, but I'm going to go from here and just go straight overhead without letting this thing pull me forward, right? Like I'm not going to go forward like that, and I'm not leaning back like this. I have perfect posture while going into extension, okay? And so what I'm doing, when I get my shoulders into extension, my shoulder blades are actually going down, right? As my shoulder comes up, it goes, you know, kind of back into the socket here, shoulder blades set down, and that's a great strong position to practice, right? Power position, this is a power position in yoga, mountain pose, and right here, right there, right? So holding that, even just holding that at first, Again, I'm squeezing my glutes, I got my core uh, activated, my belly button sucked into my spine, and my chin is slightly tucked here, right? I'm not letting my head drop forward. And that's something you wanna watch when you have a weak back or a weak spine. You, you know, you, your tendency is to drop the head forward, and that's where you can even hurt yourself when you're lifting or doing exercises like this. So this is another great one to hold even just isometrically or for two or three seconds at the top, and again, about 10 to 20 reps couple times a day or even just working those into like your workout routine would be excellent. Guys, so you know nothing new here but this is exercise number three. It's going to be essentially starting with a baby cobra working your way all the way up into doing supermans and ironmans all right. So basically what you want to do 
you know, yourself or your child, you're gonna lie down. You could just start first. For some people, they have a, again, a weak spine, no disrespect here, but they have a weak spine. So just starting with your forehead on the hands and then tucking that chin slightly and then lifting the head back. That's step one, right? So cervical retraction. Next step two is like getting the whole sternum to lift at the same time, right? So you can see how I'm, I'm using my arms a little bit, uh, but for me, you know, this exercise isn't that super challenging. So uh, for someone who's hard, like they might want to, you know, press or whatever. Uh, again, I'm not like looking up at the sky. I'm not like tucking my chin so much that my head goes down. I'm really trying to lift my, my forehead and my sternum at the same time, okay? So, right, now maybe go to baby cobra, get your hands, thumbs kind of by uh, chest and uh, nipple level. Again, now the head is resting all the way on the ground. And I'm gonna lift my head and my sternum. In this case, I'm using my triceps a little bit, almost like a little push up to lift them at the same time. But eventually, I can take my hands off the ground. I'm gonna really focus on my glutes being activated. And now I can lift my head and my sternum off the ground at the same time. Good, so now I feel that really strong through there. Well, guess what? That's where most people's backs ache at the end of the day where they're feeling really tired and achy. Believe it or not, we need to turn those muscles on and get them to do more work during the day instead of just like hanging out and trying to hold this bowling ball head three inches of where it's supposed to be, okay? So if you can get your head back by doing these extension exercises and get your head and your rib cage and your pelvis all into alignment, it's gonna be a much more efficient position whether you're standing, walking, or sitting all day, okay? So the last thing is gonna be doing like a Superman or an Ironman. This is more for athletics, but really good for coordination. Ultimately, you're gonna get your arms and legs out. You're gonna start, just kind of actively lift the ch chest and the sternum off. I'm not necessarily going for like the max height that I could go to, but I'm lifting it, it's actively raised. And then I'm alternating like Superman flying in the sky and I can even do both at the same time and I can hold it like this, or I can put my hands back like this. I call this one Iron Man because you know Iron Man flies more like head first like this. And then I can even work in a little rocking, get a little rolling going on there. That's great for getting your glutes activated, the spine and everything all connected at the same time and really a good solid tight core. And so that's your third exercise there. And if you did all of those on a daily basis, it probably only takes you about five minutes and you're gonna have better posture and hopefully avoid having to come see me when things are really bad. But of course, having proper alignment is the key to success and what makes this work. So hopefully you found today's content helpful. Make sure you like, subscribe, do that thing. And if you have any comments, leave one below. I'd love to make another video of something you're interested in.